What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Beers for Build. Today's episode, we're kicking off a new build. A budget build. You saw it in the title. I bought the cheapest WRX STI in the entire world. And this thing is cheap for a reason. It was flooded in the Texas floods. We're jumping into the world of flood cars, guys. They can be a great value if you can make them ever work again. So it's either win big or lose everything. Normally, and I have no idea what we've bought. So in today's episode, I'm gonna show you around what we got. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I deal with bidding on flood cars. I'm gonna tell you the incredibly embarrassing story about bidding on this thing, but luckily, I got it for cheap. And, uh, and then we'll start diagnosing it and see how bad of a deal we might have gotten. Let me show you around the car. Skip the intro, but stay tuned. into this, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes for you when you're shopping online and adds them to your cart. Online shopping is great, it's easy, it's convenient. We buy everything that we use here on the show online, but sometimes you're missing out on huge discounts because finding promo codes can be really hard and sometimes you don't even know they exist. But with Honey, it is very, very simple. So imagine this scenario, and you Honey users that already have this know how great this is. You're shopping online at one of your favorite sites like eBay or Walmart or Home Depot or Tire Rack, and you go to your checkout, and then this little thing comes down and it says apply coupons. You click the little button, you give it a few seconds to think, it finds the best coupon code for you on Online and automatically will then apply that and you watch the prices just drop. It's a fantastic tool and I love how it works. It's not intrusive. I have it installed on every single computer that I use. Uh, I remember when we were working on the Huracan, I had to order a Huracan hatch. So the rear hatch is a several thousand dollar piece and I go to check out and in eBay, it just pops down. I hit apply coupons and all of a sudden it applies a discount for several hundred dollars. And I was just like blown away that there was hundreds of dollars of savings to be had there and I didn't even know about it, but Honey found them for me. I personally have saved so much money using Honey. It's not like hundreds of dollars. I have saved thousands and thousands of dollars using Honey. That's why I stand by this product so much. I think I've saved enough money that I could probably buy another budget build just with the money that I've saved. And be as for builders that use the code build and that use the link in the description, we have collectively saved $398,000. That's enough money to buy a brand new Aventador or buy two used Aventadors. And I'm like a Honey veteran. I've been using Honey for years. They've been a big supporter and sponsor of this show for years, so thanks to them for that. And I'm still blown away by how many different online stores that I find that Honey supports. They support over 30,000 different online stores. So for me, it's pretty much everywhere I go. So clearly not having Honey is just like passing up on free money. It's so easy to install and it's free. You just go to joinhoney.com slash build. You click once, you click twice and then you got it installed and you're ready to start saving. So guys, go get it for free right now. It's joinhoney.com slash build or there is a link at the top of the description. Huge thanks to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get back to it. So I bought this car at online salvage auction and I um, normally I do a good amount of research. I use different tools and resources and I plan ahead and then I record it, right? So I was there at the auction paying attention. This is a Houston flood car. So this was in the last round of Houston floods. Um, and I was not, I was waiting for my car to come up on auction. I was talking with Chelsea about what car to buy her, and then I saw, bang, this like Subaru, you know, WRX STI, it pops up, and the bid is extremely low, and I see people slowing down around $2,800. And I was like, no way this car's about to go for $2,800. But I didn't have time to read any information. I didn't know if it had a salvage title or a junk title or, or, or anything. I saw one picture of the front end and said, you know what, that doesn't look that bad. And I clicked bid. The next person then clicked bid. So I was in at 28 or 2,900, must have been 2,800. The next person uh, clicked bid. And in that time frame, I was able to look at one more picture and see the water level line, which I'm gonna show you later. And then I just clicked bid again. And I said, you know what? STI has been a dream car of mine. I've always wanted to own these things. I was in love with these cars in high school. So I was like $3,000, I'm, I'm in all day long. Even if it has no engine, I don't really care. I'm bidding on this thing because the body looks straight. So I'd seen two pictures 
clicked bid again, and $3,000, this car was sold to me. So we bought a, what is this, 2007? 2007 Subaru WRX STI manual for $3,000. So after I won the auction, I could not stop laughing because Chelsea was mid conversation about what car to buy her and I just literally bought a car almost on accident, but I knew I got a great value and I was really, really excited about this. And I literally just bought this last week. So I didn't really know this was coming, um, but it, it's a flood car. So first thing I looked, is the title junked or is the title salvaged? Junked means it's never going back on the road. Luckily, the title was salvaged. So that was one win you know, in the book. Now, the next thing that I look for is the water level on a flood car. So they have a water level mark right here meaning this is where the flood level waters got to now that ain't too bad engine intake is way up there on top other things like that good signs that this car um, probably well definitely well let me rewind a little bit anytime you're buying a flood car it's a total gamble the thing could be completely 100% bricks salt water can get into the computers and just absolutely kill them but if you're looking for good signs look for a car with low water level intrusion not something that went up above the engine because then it's most likely gonna kill your engine so then I started looking through other pictures and started seeing serious signs of bad news. Here's the first one. Now we have not, let me say that we haven't touched this car. We got it off the tow truck, but the, the front bumper was in the back seat and it was folded in a bad way. So we opened up the back seats and took it out. So I punched out this plastic here. But what I saw was a window that was partially down and plastic over it over here. And on the other side, it was plasticed over as well. Now that is a sign that potentially the electronics could be bad and they weren't able to roll the windows back up. So that's the first real bad sign. Open her up and I verified the second really bad sign was that the auction picture of the dashboard had no lights on, nothing on, and the auction listed no odometer. So they weren't able at the auction yard to turn this car on to get it to come to life at all to be able to tell the odometer reading. So that was really bad news that I found out within like five minutes of buying the car. Now, Subaru WRX STI body, to me, I mean, I don't know if they're worth 3,000 bucks, but I was like, I mean, obviously I had already bought the car, but what I wasn't really even upset about it. I was like, okay, we might've bought a bricked car, but we live in the Pacific Northwest. This is like Subaru country. There's so many Subarus around here. There's so many people. I figure if we have to replace the entire wiring harness and all the computers and everything, it's probably still even a solid deal. So I didn't have any buyer's remorse. Now, I don't know what this means that we're getting into on the channel and how big of a nightmare that's gonna be, and that is yet to be seen, but it's an STI for $3,000. I mean, how can you say no? This was a situation where I could buy back out of the auction for $400 and save myself the headache, but I did decide not to do it. Now, one of the other things that I saw in the pictures, there's a picture basically like this, and uh, I could tell that the intake manifold and the intercooler that goes on top of here were missing. So I'm guessing that the previous owner had some aftermarket stuff on here and he pulled it off. Also the headlights were missing as well. So it's not super uncommon that the um, after the auction, if you buy aftermarket parts and stuff like that, uh, your insurance, if your insurance doesn't want to kind of reimburse you from this, this also came from Geico, which is um, a good sign. So you're buying straight from an insurance company. So they don't, they don't do any like scan scammy stuff normally. They don't try and jimmy rig anything. They just kind of push it to the auction the way it is, especially in a flood situation. I don't expect they're going to pay attention to every car. There's 10,000 cars in the yard. Anyways, um, I figure, Kyle, will you pop the, there we go. I figure that the previous owner maybe had some mods on here and he took them off and took them with him when he left. So let's get down to work. Let's start figuring out what it's gonna take to restore this baby to previous glory. Now, um, we know some things that need to be done sooner than later is we need to be peeling up the interior carpeting because it's uh, it's not damp right now. They do a good job of drying out the cars, but it smells a little musky. And what I like to do, I've had one car that's been partially flooded before. What I like to do is peel the carpets back up as much as you can. You don't have to take them all the way out of the car sometimes, just enough to get the air flowing through there and then hit them with some mold killing stuff like some CLR or something else like that. So it's going to mean a seat removal, carpet removal and stuff like that. But first I want to figure out if we're going to need to, you know, buy new computer modules through this thing, a new wiring harness, what type of stuff for the electrical system. If we need to buy all that new, uh, we're going to need to buy. So uh, there's a chance that this battery is just dead. Um, so Kyle's going to get the jumper and we're going to go ahead and put the jump on here and just try and turn the key and see what happens. It's extremely unlikely that anything's going to happen because um, they use jumper boxes at the auction yards too. It's not like it's a secret trick. So 
Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, jumper box is on and the car has done nothing. Nothing's dinging or beeping or, whoa, we got some lights though. Hey yo, look at that. Door, open light came on and something is blinking. Guys, that's a really good sign. Let's get the key on and see what happens. Oh, this is glowing too. That's another really good sign. No way, okay. Okay, we got some lights. Got some more, that's still dark. Oh, it lit up for us. Boys, how did the auction yard not figure out how to do this? That's crazy. Okay, so. We have a bunch of the random lights on, but those are often on just because the car's, you know, not started yet. Outside temp, it says it's 48. That sounds about accurate. Miles, only 106,000 miles on this car, which is a fantastic surprise because most people drive these Subarus into the ground. We got the airbag system. It says passenger airbag is off, which is should be correct. We got, it's blinking, it says system check. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's blinking, it's a system check right there. But that, that is a really, really, really good sign that I was not expecting. Hell yeah. It's clicking and doing stuff under here. That's, that worries me a little bit, but I am hyped by that. That is so lucky. I don't know why they would have not included pictures of this thing in the auction yard. But um, so the next step is let's go ahead and get our scanner. We'll plug our scanner into this system and we'll, we'll, um, we'll run a full diagnostic. Now, things like the sensors that, are, that belong under here, mass airflow sensor, we don't have a throttle body, intake air temperature sensor, all those types of things, they're gonna be throwing errors, but um, we might be able to check out the rest of the car's body control. This is crazy. Okay, the car's acting weird. The fan is on for the radiator. No idea why that's happening, but check this out. I just ran the scan. All of this stuff, airbag system, keyless unit, occupation detectum, ABS, VDC, transmission control system, everything that we scan for has no faults. We just have engine control system faults, and I'm guessing this is gonna be stuff like what, let's see. I'm guessing this is gonna be, you know, for things like that we don't have plugged in. So we have mass air or volume, current flow. Yeah, that's not in throttle position, that's not installed. Engine coolant temp, that's gone. Intake air temp, gone, manifold pressure. All of these things relate to the things that are missing on the engine. There are sensors for the engine that are missing and nothing else it looks like. Wow. Some things might not throw codes until later, but it looks like we just dodged an insane bullet on this one. I mean, having the airbags not being deployed, that's a huge bonus, like uh, uh, so many good things. Now again, I'm a little hesitant. It almost seems a little bit too good to be true, but that's phenomenal. We got so lucky. All right, so that's phenomenal news. Now I'm gonna move over into the engine bay, start to find out what we're missing catalog it, guess, I don't know, look at pictures of an STI. Uh, I got a friend that actually lives in town here that I met at a car meet that owns STIs. He has for a long time. I might call him in here to tell us what we're missing so we can help, uh, we could try and order it all and get it all in here sooner than later because that'd be fantastic. Um, so I'm going to start looking at that and also look for flood damage over there. Uh, while I'm doing that, um, Kyle's going to start tearing apart the interior. I think the first step is going to be getting all the seats out of here. Twenty minutes of serious downs and ups, but I got, I got some news for you guys. So here we go. Bad news first. Um, I looked in our engine compartment, and so our intake manifold is gone. But as you look here into the head and the valves, you can see a little bit of. It's weirdly like orange. Doesn't seem so much like rust, but like orange goopy stuff. Maybe like a little bit of mud. It almost looks like a little bit of mud. Um, that one's perfectly clean. That one's weird too. So that was my first sign that maybe water got in here. Now that's a bummer because 
you know, we saw that our water line was supposed to only go that high. That's not nearly as high as the intake manifold, but sometimes in floods, things splash or cars are parked on hills or whatever. So that's a bummer. Um, and I'll tell you what we do about that next. And the next thing obviously is, well, one of the first things you could do, especially if you went into the auction yard, is you could have pulled the dipstick and saw the milkshake oil. That means that water got into the oil, guys. So. Uh, right after this, we will test and see if the engine is seized. Um, you know, we can get one of these from Japan, a new replacement engine for like, not even a little more than $2,000, I think. So wouldn't be the end of the world if we had to have one. I mean, that's just a rough estimate. I've never looked at these because I've never owned a Subaru before. No, wait, I started the channel with several BRZs. <laughs> Never owned a real Subaru before. Anyways, um, good sign. Let's move on to the really good stuff. These tilets, these tilets, <laughs> damn it. YouTuber, professional. These <laughs> tires are Michelin Pilot, Pilot Sport 4S's and they have a good amount of tread on them. These are 220 bucks per tire. They have good tread all around. So that's basically a thousand bucks of brand new tires on here. And those are a really good tire that I've tested before. Now I'm not sure if they're better than Nitto, which is our official tire sponsor, but um, they're good tires. And then, ta-da! The trunk was full of goodies. We started picking around when we were in the seats and inside trying to find the previous owner's personal stuff. And uh, we found some receipts and he was putting premium in here, which is good for him. Uh, but, so this is awesome. So we, we found a lot of our parts, which is like, you know, our air intake, our intake manifolds back there, intercooler, headlight, headlight, bumper stuff, um, a free plastic bag. It looks like a car cover. So that's super solid. That's going to be a huge help. And um, I got to, you know, now figure out where a lot of these things go and stuff like that after we try and repair the engine. But that's great. That's really, really awesome. And I'm just, <laughs> so that's a huge, huge savings now too, that I don't know if previous people at the auction yard would have seen or not seen. So the parts in the trunk is a good thing, bad thing. So originally I thought it was, hey, the previous owner had a bunch of aftermarket parts and took them before it went to auction. Uh, when they all are in the trunk like that, that's normally from insurance. Sometimes an appraiser, the insurance company, Geico, will send this to a professional appraiser who was breaking down the engine side of things and then saw the damage of the engine and decided, okay, this car is totaled, which is a bad sign for us, but let's see if it's like, totaled beast for build totaled like it's never coming back to life or totaled just insurance totaled and they're scared or as oscar said is it totaled ls swap style totaled <laughs> um so there is you know you can mate an ls to this transmission you definitely can yeah i don't know if you can do it with this amount of space because the trans starts like right there but um they do make a mounting thing for this for people to use the trans as a transaxle in mid-engine cars anyways um so we checked our dipstick we saw that our intake's bad. The next thing you wanna do if you have clear signs of water intrusion in your engine is you want to uh, move the crank uh, back and forth to see if the engine is seized. If it threw a rod or something like that, so if it sucked in a bunch of water, the water can sit in the cylinder as it tries to push the other way, it won't be able to get the water out of there and it'll bend a rod and then your engine's totally toast. Now, I did see this sign right here where this radiator hose right here, this piping, has been pulled off of here before, probably because the crank is right under here and somebody got a wrench on it before. So this could be a really bad sign that the insurance company got this far and saw that the engine was seized or not. I don't know, fingers crossed, we're gonna jump into it and and uh, see if the engine seized. Boys, I have good news. This thing is like butter going back and forth. It's super easy. So the engine is not seized as far as we can tell. Uh, there is water in there, that's for sure. But that's a really, really good sign. So we're going to try and save this engine. This will be fun. All right, guys, that's what we're going to call it for this one. In the next episode, it'll be the BS for Build Classic. Will it start? We'll go through what it means to um, try and dewaterify an engine. <laughs> I don't know. I got high hopes, though. I think this is going to work. So tune in for the next one. Thank you so much for joining us. Follow us on Instagram, BS for Build. Check out all of our merch at BS for Build.com. And have a happy holidays. I'll see you guys soon.